Welcome to another Studio tutorial. In this video, we're going to cover working with your layout in Studio. I'll talk about positioning elements, stacking elements in a certain direction, wrapping your elements, setting the alignment, and the justification of your elements. As you can see, I have a blank web page, and we're going to add our first element onto this web page. So we can start by dragging and dropping a box here, and we can position this box in one of nine positions relative to this web page. And Studio gives us a nice hint showing us where this box is going to land once we let go. So let's drop this to the top left of this web page. And I'm going to go ahead and resize this so we can see this a little bit better. Now if I ever want to change my mind, I can drag and drop this anywhere else within these nine positions. So I'll go ahead and drag this in the center. And we'll resize this up just a little bit more. And now I want to add another object inside of this box. So I can expand my toolbar here and just add a random image. I'll just add this image here, and I can add this in one of nine positions relative to this box now. So let's say I want to add this right to the top here. I can pin this to the top and I can change my mind later. And now let's take a look at how this works in the layer hierarchy. So let's open up the layers panel, and we can see here at the top we have our top base layer. This is our web page, and a child of that base layer we have this box that we created. And that means anywhere that we drag this box, that image within the box is going to stay positioned relative to the box. So it's always going to stay on the top here where we pinned it. And then we can change the position of this image as well. Let's talk about setting the direction that your elements stack. Now if you add two or more elements into a parent element, let's grab one more image for example we can see some new hints showing us that this is going to drop on the top of the image, to the right of the image, right below the image, or to the left of the image. So this is where this image is going to flow. I'm going to go ahead and pin this right to the right of this image, and we can see this little arrow right here shows that all of our child elements are flowing from left to right. So we have two child elements in the layers panel, and they're stacked from left to right, and we can change that direction from top to bottom, from right to left, bottom to top, or we can change this property to wrap. And to show you how wrapping works, I'm going to add one more image here. Let's go ahead and add this image right here. And I'm just going to add this to the right. And if I change this now to wrapping, when I resize the parent element to be smaller than the children elements, it's going to start to wrap here. So we can see that break down and wrap where that last image is going to stack down below. And I can continue doing this to stack it to show three images. So that's how wrapping works. And you might also see some new tools as well. So we have alignment where we can align this box to the left of the web page. Or if I select this image, let's go ahead and align this to the top of its parent, to the bottom or to the center. We also have a justification tool. So we can stack our elements to the left, we can stack them to the center or to the right, and we can also distribute our elements full width or distribute them evenly. So the best way to get a feel for how this works is to just play around with this, how it flows. Now we can see the alignment here is showing on the left, but if we change this now from stacking top to bottom, now we have this alignment showing to align to the left, to the center, to the right. And our justification tool now lets us stack things vertically or distribute them vertically. And again, this is relative to this box. So if I change this box, because it's the parent element, if I change the size, you can see how the elements inside of this box are respecting the properties that you set previously. Again, the best way to learn the box model is to just play around with these tools and see how each element influences each other and how the relationships work between child and parent elements.